I'd like to give a huge shout out to Travis Walker for recommending this G-7700. This G7700 is much like the GD350, where it is a sly fox that is surfing under the radar. Now it's packed full of features, but it has some really unique quirks that I'm going to show you. I'm also going to give you a full tutorial exactly how this functions. Now there is some variance on this model and um, there is the positive display version, but I decided to go through the negative as I like the sort of like stealthiness and also like this sort of yellow gold that is applied for the G-Shock and all the little bits of button information. It has a very sort of symmetrical design and it has this sort of metallic gunmetal bezel or sort of like the outer bezel here. All this part here is with the shock protection resin. Then it has some bumpers either side and here it has a little bumper that is covering the light button. On the side it has these very unusual plastic buttons or dark grey on the outside with a lighter grey on the inside and this is repeated on the opposite side too. There is some cross head screws that hold this strap together and I actually do find this quite a good looking watch. Now it was one that I have seen before but I've always just scrolled past and I'm not sure whether it's this sub window here being square and the rest of the watch being very sort of circular. But anyway, after Travis Walker recommended it, I thought, well, I have to check it out because these watches are very affordable. And boy, he wasn't wrong. This is an incredible G-Shock. So on the display at the top here, I have the year 2020, then I have the month, I have the date, and obviously the time, and this is set with the daylight saving time. And in the sub dial here, it's showing that it's Friday, the day of the week, and at the bottom, it's doing a week count, and this is on week zero one, because we are in the first week of 2020. And at the very bottom here, it has a toolbar. Now it's very, very fine, and so if you're like me and require glasses, then this could be a little bit of a challenge, but really on the main parts, it's perfectly fine. So on the outside here, it has on the outer side here on the chapter ring, it has some countdown animation. Again, it is very fine, but it's just for show. So really it isn't that important. I'm going to refer to the buttons as A, B, C, and D. And the separate button here is the light button. So that really doesn't need much explaining. So first off, I'm going to be pressing A, C, and D because I want to get into the test screen. So there it is, all lit up. And then by pressing button D here, I can scroll through some different sort of uh, features or different sort of uh, digits on the display. And the module on this one is a 3095. And then pressing again, it comes back to home screen. I'm gonna either call it home screen or home time, just so that you know where I am in this tutorial. So from home time or home screen, pressing button D here, the once, 
is going to change this part here on the display and particularly in the sub dial here. So at the moment it's on the year. So when I press it, it now shows me the day of uh, how many days are lapsed in the year. And this is showing 363 days. So this is 363 days left to go before it is back to 2021. And uh, pressing again, I now have dual flashing up and this is set to Hong Kong. And this is a dual time that can be displayed in the home screen. And then pressing again takes me back and you see it comes up with HT for home time. So let me just quickly go through that again. So there is the counter, and then you have your dual time, and then HT back to home time. In home time, if you press button B and D together, you get a little chirp. You actually get another sort of test screen, and what it does, it just goes through a few of the modes. So we have the world time there, and every sort of five seconds, it repeats itself. So back into the home time, I'll just let one more run. So you just get an idea. And there it goes into this stopwatch. You can stop this using a button A and C at any time, and it will just come out of it like so. Next is the backlight. And this just illuminates for about one to one and a half seconds. But you can, with a long press, activate the auto light. And at the very bottom in this toolbar, you can see it has this very, very fine icon. And to turn it off, it's just a matter of pressing the backlight for an extra three seconds and it switches it off. Next, I want to go through the adjustment screens while in home time. And it's just pressing the adjust button, button A for a few seconds, and it makes an audible chirp. Now, pay attention to this sub dial here because this is going to tell you exactly what is being adjusted or what mode you are during the adjustment screen. Here it's come up with sec, and yes, it's flashing with the sex. And here, or sex, or six, I mean six. And uh, using the buttons B, uh, B and D, I can adjust this. Now by pressing once, it goes back to zero. And if it laps over 30 seconds, then it will adjust the minutes by one. So from here, by pressing the mode button, button C, it will go to daylight saving time. And here it's on, and here it's written with the daylight saving. And when I press button D, it turns it off and also removes that icon there. And I like to have it on daylight saving at the moment because we're in winter. So moving on, it goes to home. You can see it's written home and it's flashing London. Now you have 48 cities and 28 time zones. So you can go up and down using those two buttons there. So I'm in London. So moving on, it now comes up with HR and that's for the hour. Then you can see it has min for the minutes and then it has the 24. And pressing button D, I change it to AM and PM, and now it has the P icon. And then that changes to 12, and then back to 24. Now pressing mode button from there, it goes to YR, which is the year. Then it has the month, MM. Then you have the date, day date. And then you have week. And here it's flashing Monday. So I like to have the start of the week as Monday, but you can adjust this and you can have it from Sunday. You also have this very unusual one, ISO. Now I've been looking in the manual trying to figure out how this works. And basically it starts from Monday, but uses the very first day of the year as a Thursday. It's very, very unusual. And maybe someone else will understand that better than me. 
but I just like it simple and having the week kicking off as Monday. So pressing the mode button, it goes to our T. Now I'm gonna come back to this because it does a very cool feature. So let's just go past that for now. Next, you have CNT, and no, it's not explosive. This is contrast. So at the moment, you can see that the digits are sort of in a blue. So by pressing this button down here, D, I have seven sort of contrast levels. And you can see it's starting to change color and it's becoming more sort of into the yellow, into the gold. So seven is the maximum. And look at the difference there. So if I press again, it goes back to one. You can see there. So if I press here, it goes straight to seven. You see the difference? That is really, really cool. And I must say, when it's in sort of in the darker sort of daylight hours, the gold tends to uh, work a little bit better as opposed to that. But maybe it's all to do with your eyes, whether you're colorblind or not. Anyway, it is there and it's another quirk. So let's have it on the gold for the rest of the tutorial because it's very much sort of readable. Now pressing mode button here, it goes back to the seconds. Now if I press the adjust button once, it's going to go here. And this at the moment is my sort of um, dual time, which is set in the home screen. And at the moment it's on Hong Kong. This is telling me that do I want the daylight settings on daylight saving time on or off? So you have that option and you can also press the mode button and actually change your sort of dual time here. So this is where you would have it. So I like to have it in Hong Kong because I got a lot of contacts, uh, contacts there. And then pressing the mode again takes you back to home time. So I'm just gonna quickly go through all the modes so you just get a little bit of an idea what this watch actually has. First off, it has a beep and it goes into stopwatch. Then it has this recording function, which I'll come back to. Then it has a timer. Then it has your alarm with the hourly signal. And then it has world time. And then with a higher pitch of a tone, it's back to home screen. And note that it actually does keep changing in this sub dial. So let me just do that again and pay attention. Stopwatch. Recording function, timer, alarm, world time, and HT for home time. So let's go for the first mode, and this is the stopwatch. Now, I'm going to say this watch is very much about timing. So it's stopwatch, timer, and the alarm function, but it's what each one can do. And kicking off with the stopwatch, it can do up to one thousandth of a second, and there it is all ready to go. And this has multiple split levels. Now this can record up to 99 split times. And if you carry on uh, setting the split time, it will delete the 99th and replace it with the last one, if that makes sense. And it will take it even further up to 900 and 99 split times. Now this is a 10 hour stopwatch and I think that is plenty for now. Anyway, here it is. Button D does the start stop. And there, look at that go absolutely crazy. So you have your flashing icons, one there, you have one there and one there. And it's just start stop and then these will give you all the same time, but I will come back to that very briefly. And then pressing button B resets that. So if I start it, and note here, it's come up with lap zero. So if I press the split time here, it will register lap one. This is your lap one. And if I press again, I have lap two, which is here. And this is a combined lap of the time, of the stopwatch time. 
So let's note here, if I press that on 30, you'll see that is the time where I stopped the third lap time. And then I can just go on and on, as I mentioned before, up to 99. So once you stop it, it's like so, and then you just press reset and that is the stopwatch side. Well, it's not completely finished because the next mode from here is the record function and the record function is only to do with the stopwatch. And at the moment it's showing the date, the time that you started the stopwatch and here it's got the record and it's showing best lap time was lap six. And from here, you can push the adjust button once and this will give you the best final lap time and that is the time that you stopped the stopwatch. So pressing it again takes you back here and then pressing button D or you can use, you can use button B as well. You can press this and this will show you the lap time. So that is the first lap time and this time up here will add on the lap time. So that's the first lap time and there's your second lap time and it's all indicated in this window here and that will give you your total right up to the final lap time, which was six, I believe, and then back to the lap final. And I thought that was very, very cool indeed until, let me go back and show you something again in the stopwatch. So you're in this stopwatch here, by pressing the adjustment button, you get a five here. And this is a countdown alarm to the stopwatch going off. So watch this with some animation. Oh, that is so, so, so cool. So if I stop that and reset it, it's now going to reset it as a sort of start, stop, stopwatch. So by pressing the adjust, I have it like so. And uh, if you've made a mistake, you could just press button B up here and reset it. So let me just do that again. So let me start that. So if I start it pressing button B, it just turns it off like so. Now, if I come back out of that and go into the record, it's now reset everything. Now, I couldn't find anything in the instruction manual, but I've managed to find it like so. But if you press the adjust button, it takes you back like that. Otherwise, you cannot reset it. This will just reset itself every time when you take a new stopwatch function or reading. Before I go any further, I've just noticed that when I go through the modes, there is some animation. It sort of layers the different sections one after another. So if I go into stopwatch, you'll see that it will show this section first, then that one, and then that, the third one last. Watch this. Boom, boom, boom. And if I go to timer, see? Do, do, do. I just think that is so cool. There you go, home time. And uh, if I go back to stopwatch, you'll see I have got the five second counter timer ready to go. So if I come back out of that by pressing the just button, it will always come back to where you left off. So from there, going to record. The next one is the timer. So in timer mode, you are seeing the home time displayed, which I think is really cool. Now, TR1 and TR2 means it has two timers that work separately. They also work together. So the best way to sort of explain this is hit the adjust button for a few seconds and show you how all this works. So the first one is TR1, and here it's showing you that this is the adjustment for the hour. So pressing the mode, adjust to the minutes, and you can even adjust the seconds. Now this is a 100 hour timer from one second. So let me just give you an example and put five seconds on there. Once you have adjusted or selected what you need, 
press the adjust button and it goes like this. So when I press start using button D, and let's just play it out so you can hear it as well. And this will alarm for five seconds and sort of pressing any button will reset it. And then it's just going to start again. So let's just stop that like so and then you have to reset it otherwise you can't adjust let me give you an example so if it's on four seconds here to go pressing the adjust button won't allow me i have to press button b to reset so what do i do if i go through and adjust the second timer so let's put that on also five seconds and let me show you what this does. Makes a peep and then it starts timer two. Beep, 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 and then back up to timer one. So basically you just have a repeat timer. How cool is that? So I'm just gonna stop that there and it's already set. So. That is the timer function. Next is the alarm. So the alarm function with signal is probably the best I've ever seen, period. And this is not just with Casio, this is also for Timex. So Timex, if you're listening, <laughs> this makes a change. Look at what this could do. So at the moment, I have it on the signal and using button D here, I can scroll through. So I have alarm one, I have alarm two, I have alarm three, alarm four, and I have a snooze loan. And so if I press again, it goes back to signal. Now there is some things happening on here. First of all, you're seeing all, you have no idea what that means, and you see daily. Well, if I was to press button B up here, I turn the signal alarm on. And then at the bottom here, it has the most tiniest, the most finest little indication at the bottom there. You probably couldn't even see it from this distance. So let me just put that on and off so you can see how it is working. So I have that off at the moment. Now pressing the adjust, yes, you have adjustment in the hourly signal. So if I hold my finger on there, you now have all flashing and here it's saying signal from. Now by pressing either button B or D, I can now adjust when I want the signal to go off. Now, if I say wanted that to go off, say from in the morning, um, say I wanted the alarm to go off, say from eight o'clock, by pressing mode, I can adjust till when. So at the moment, it's from eight o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock. Every hour in between will go beep, beep. Now, if I press the mode button again, it has now, it goes off daily. So that is seven days a week. By pressing button D here, I can adjust it. So I can have the hourly signal to go off on weekends, or I can have it going off through the weekday, Monday to Friday. And again, you can adjust this all separately with the hours and the so on. I just think that is just incredible. I've never seen so much adjustment on an hourly signal before. So once you've got all that set, you just press the adjust and away you go. And then pressing button, B there just turns it off. So back in the signal, I need to adjust this again because you have the time there. So if you don't want that, what you do, you go back. As soon as it goes back to zero from one, boom, it just goes to all. And that is all you need to do if you want the daily hourly signal to be on all the time, 24-7. So 
So I'm just going to turn this off, otherwise it's going to panic Mrs. Rangeman. And this goes for the alarms as well. So let's just choose this alarm here. Again, you can press button B to turn it on and off. And down here you get the very finest little icon there. So if I press the adjustment button here, it goes straight into the adjustment. Also just like to point out that it turns the alarm automatically on. So here I've got HR on daily and yes I'm going to come back to that. So we've got the hours and then we've got the minutes. You see that it's changed. I think you're getting the picture now it's gone to daily. So this will be daily, so that would go off every single day for till you turn it off by pressing the D button. I now have it once, so once the alarm goes off, it will just turn the alarm off automatically and won't repeat. You can have it on weekends, Saturday and Sunday, or you can have it during the week, so that is just incredible. So let me just turn that off and just show you when I go into the snooze and turn that alarm on, you'll see at the bottom, it has the little tiny snooze icon along with the alarm. Now the snooze will repeat every five minutes and while it's in the repeating mode, the snooze icon will flash. By holding button D down for a few seconds, you'll be able to test the alarm. And how unique is that? It has an, a sort of an echo effect. So from signal and alarm, the next mode is going to be the world time. And at the moment I have two world times, so you can choose one for your home screen and you can choose the third one or because you've got your home time, you've got your dual time and then you have your world time. So possible of three time zones. So using buttons B and D, I can scroll through and notice that it only changes the bottom one here. So here I can just go through and say, I wanted the third time zone to be Tokyo. Now I can press the adjust button with a long press and this will adjust the daylight savings. Now this just does this on here because in the adjustment mode I can adjust my dual time separately which you've seen. So if I wanted that on it's like so. And that is pretty much all there is. And that is the most least interesting one, but at least you have three time zones. So there's Hong Kong, Tokyo, and world time. Sorry, I stalled there because I was trying to think what else it can do, but that is all it can do. So pressing mode button now takes me back to the home time. Now, this doesn't have the quick feature of going back. So say I was in stopwatch with a long press on the mode, taking you back to home time. What this does instead is actually turn on mute, which is down there. So with a long press on mode, has a little chirp, and now I have mute turned on. So when I go through the modes, it is very stealthy indeed. So that is how you turn that on and off. So just another long press and then you hear it chirp. And now I have the little beeps back. So that is the, actually it isn't the end because I have yet to show you the main quirk of this watch. So from home time, pressing the adjust button, I need to zap my way through to this one here. If you remember going through the date, it's this one where I had LT that was off by pressing button D. I now have sync. So let me come back out of the adjustment mode and show you what this can do. Now I'm going to show you in timer 
So this will basically work for all the alarm notifications. So that is the timer, the signal, the hourly signal, and the alarm. So let me just adjust this to five seconds and let me show you what this does. Okay, brace yourself and pay attention to this part here. It's not gonna vibe, it's gonna do something very different. It has, <laughs> it has a flashing green and red light. How? incredible is that let me do it again it is i couldn't believe when i first tried that that is just amazing love it um i've got to say travis walker you really did point me in the right direction this watch is absolutely incredible that is an incredible credible g-shock and yes i have used this and um it does have a few little battle scars but hey it's still an incredible watch and it still has plenty a uh, plenty of go in it anyway that is the time the seven seven the double seven zero zero time and as always, thanks for watching.